Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. All right, let's just get into it. I've got a great show for you. I have a great guest. I've got Leah Michelle Scoop with Stephen Glickman, but I, who's my hilarious guest, I'm going to get into Tinsley leaving New York. But first, I want to talk about what's going on with Meghan Markle's best friend. Um, they kind of look alike, by the way. They both have dark hair and like to wear blue. Um, her name is Jessica Mulrooney, and she became Megan's best friend. I'm not exactly sure if she was the stylist that actually told Megan, hey, come with me to the Soho House tonight and meet Prince Harry. She she runs in very powerful, hip, cool circles around the world. Um, she's some tie to a former prime minister in Canada. So she's this very well-connected, beautiful girl, Jessica. And she also has a show that she's hosting called Redo I Do about weddings that have gone wrong in the past due to weather, someone being mean, I, I all of that. Um, and then they redo the weddings for those couples that just want a redo of the day. Um, I think I guys told you that when I found out about this show, I got kind of annoyed because I just went over some old emails. But Ross Matthews and I came up with the same show idea and pitched it to a production company and then we went to all these networks and nobody wanted it in 2017. Now, I'm not saying someone stole our idea, but it's just annoying when something that you thought of doing like three, four years ago, then it comes to fruition with Meghan Markle's best friend. And it was on Canada TV. It already has premiered. Meghan was at the premiere party. And um, anyway, so that I kind of was like a little butt hurt about that. Well... Not anymore, because this girl, her life really took a turn for the worse. Now, this other beautiful um, social influencer that I believe is English, because um, when I heard her speak, she sounded English, and she is black, and she's a social influencer, and she claims that she, not claims, but she posted something kind of out there asking, hey, my fellow social media influencers, we... I need you to step up. I need you to do more about Black Lives Matter. Now, Sasha claims that after that, she heard directly from Jessica Mulrooney, Meghan Markle's best friend, host of Redo I Do. By the way, I, did I tell you that our show was na named Renewed? I think, actually, I think the Redo I Do is kind of a better name. But we would have been open to a name change. Anyway, they can call Ross and I will be happy to go to Canada and do this in Canada. Anyway, so um, Sasha says that then Jessica reached out to her. I don't know if it was via text or what, and really took offense and said, you're calling me out and I don't appreciate that. And I'm going to take this time to promote my show, Redo I Do, the show that I stole from Ross and Heather. Just kidding. And I'm going to do that instead. And I really take offense to it. And you and and then Sasha says, now in all the articles I read, it's that Sasha claims this happened. So I don't, I've not seen proof that these texts or messages happened. But apparently she said that then Jessica made some type of threat, like, um, better, you know, lay off of me or I'm going to get in touch with the brands that work with you, Sasha. And then that really shook Sasha to the core that possibly her income could be, you know, and her, her career could be jeopardized because Jessica is so incredibly well connected in this world. So then Sasha went on her Instagram and did a video saying that she is shook to the core and that Jessica has said this to her and threatened her a single mother, a black single mother, about her livelihood, saying she's going to contact brands that Sasha has relationships with and possibly ruin them. Got back to Jessica. Jessica then did a Instagram post apologizing, saying, um, you probably heard that I had a disagreement with Sasha and I'm going to be better, think better as Meghan Markle's best friend. I've had the privilege of really being part of learning and educating myself about the you know climate of the world today. Um, however, you know, I got it got heated and I apologize. Then a couple hours after that went out, um, Sasha shared a DM from Jessica 
to her saying, get ready for a libel suit. And she misspelled libel, which is funny. And Sasha pointed out that that DM came after she had posted the apology on her own page. So with all that coming out, um, the Canadian TV network, CTV, has canceled Redo, I Do. And meanwhile, Jessica Mulroney then, I don't know if her people or her, went back into her social media and they realized that she went back and actually deleted any little comment that was supportive to Stassi Schroeder under Stassi's photos from back in November 22nd of last year. She removed one that was like, hey, girl, you look pretty. And the last one was May 1. Stassi posted something about having like no makeup and like a psoriasis patch on her face or something. And she wrote, gorgeous, love you, girl. Anyway, she went back and removed any kind of support for Stassi in her comments, um, which also I just think that even shows that you're like grosser and weirder about your own image and really not in the right place. Because, look, you know, uh, I I can't imagine going back and seeing like, God, did I like one of Stassi's outfits? If I liked her outfit, I still like her outfit today. I'm not going to spend the time, go back, remove it because I've got other things to do. I'm providing a show for you guys. This girl is now just like, oh, I can't be. Oh, no one can know we're friends. Well, we already knew, and it doesn't matter. That's not why you're in trouble. You're not in trouble because you said that Stassi looked cute back in November. You're in trouble because you went after this woman and threatened to screw over her business, though she, you know, she claims. Anyway, it was enough for them to wash their hands of her. Now, what is Meghan Markle going to remove any comment that she said on Jessica's page? Hey, bestie, look at us in blue. I don't know. I don't know if she will. I don't know if Harry's busy all morning going through their um, Instagram page, making sure that we no longer will remember that Meghan and her are friends, or maybe she'll just, you know, sit back and they'll still be friends. Who knows? It's juicy. Let's get into the Real Housewives of New York. Well, about an hour before, right before the show aired on the East Coast, Tinsley Mortimer posted on her Instagram this beautiful video that gave me chills. I put it on my Instagram story um, because it's that song, In a Thousand Years, na 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 I always just like imagine someone like getting on toe and doing ballerina dances. Anyway, it's her being surprised by Scott. Um, at Christmas time, and him asking her to marry him. So then we, and in it, she writes, it's been a great ride. Love you. Love you, Bravo. Love you, Andy. I'm excited about my future. Now, people were dying because Sonia, her comment under that was, um, and Sonia writes, and without me, you wouldn't have met. So happy for you, girl. You got the fairy tale. Moved to New York City to live with a true girlfriend who was there for you with open arms, and then it's a photo of a blonde girl raising her hand. You know, one of those little emojis of that. That means that's me, Sonia. I introduce you to Scott the man. May all your dreams come true. I'm always here. Where does she say that? Oh, sorry. I got you on. Oh, Real Housewives of New York. You're right. And my co-star introduced you to Scott the man. May all your dreams come true. I'm always here. Well, the co-star we all know was Carol Radswell because she was dating um, the vegan chef and what was his name? Andrew or something? I can't remember. Carol's boyfriend, though, he's the one who knew Scott. And they went on a double date, Adam, and they went on a double date and they met. And then as you know, if you as because you're watching the show, it's been up and down. And um, but throughout this season, she said, I'm dating somebody else who's a divorced dad. That's not working out. Then she said, I do love Scott. I wanted to work out with Scott. Leah goes, go and get your man. Try to get knocked up if you can. Get a ring on it. Like everyone's, She's like, if that's where you want to be. So in this episode, we see that Tinsley had, um, they shared that Tinsley had posted that she was with Scott. And then she meets the girls, all the girls, Luann and Elise, and by the way, I have Elise, Elise coming on the show, this coming up, and then um, the new girl. And then we have got Sonia and Ramona and Dorinda. They all go into like a haunted 
house thing because this is like a couple days before Halloween. And then they go and they're having drinks and they're going to eat. And Leah and Tinsley meet them once they've been seated. So Tinsley is on the end of the table. And so they're like, so you're with Scott. That's great. You're with – and she's like, yeah, I mean, it's – she doesn't have the ring at this point because it's October and she got engaged at the end of November. But she's like, yeah, I mean, I we're together and it's what I want. And I'm really happy. And they're like, oh, that's good. And then Dorinda, who's just been out for Tinsley the whole time, is like, oh, that's great. Now you can get out. You can move out of your hotel. You could actually check out. You could actually tell the hotel clerk that you're moving out because it was just a hotel anyway and you never really moved in. And she's just like, um, it's a residence and okay. <laughs> yeah, Scott and I are happy. We're in love. Yeah, I'm going to Chicago. Okay, Dorinda, I hear you. And it wasn't, it's a hotel, yes, but there's also a residence factor to it. Okay, then take your stuff and move to Chicago. Good for you. And I was like, geez. And then she said to the other girls, who is uh, Sonia, and she goes, and maybe Scott can get a turkey baster and get you pregnant. Ha! And she high-fives Sonia, which I don't even think Sonia heard what she said, because I don't think she would have, like, high-fived to making fun of a fertility issue or a woman who's, like, in her early 40s that's obviously going to maybe have some trouble getting pregnant. It was just – it's just, like, so rude. So then, anyway, they go out for drinks another night with Luann and Ramona – and Ramona was like, you know, I just, I was a little bit rude because I was with Dorinda and I've like been on her bad side. But I just want to say, Tinsley, I'm really, really happy for you. I think it's great. But, and then all of a sudden this guy with a big guy with a big face comes up and they're like, did you double book us, Ramona? And she's like, yeah, well, I, had a hot, I had a hot date. And the guy comes over and both Luann and Tinsley has met this guy several times. And I feel like everybody that Ramona dates is what I used to call back in the day, quote unquote, a fixture. We used to call them fixtures in that you would go out and you'd go to the hot spot and you'd see that guy alone. He's kind of rich looking. He's kind of older. Then I had a baby. Then I'd go out five years later to the next hot spot and the freaking fixture would still be there alone. No wingman. Still just trolling young girls. Still date. That's what I feel like these guys. They've all met them. Oh, I met you here. They've all been moving around dating these people. So then Ramona plans her birthday party. Because as you know, Ramona loves a beautiful birthday just for me. And Dorinda goes, why don't you celebrate it with Sonia? Why don't you have a dual birthday party? And Ramona's like, no, I don't want a dual party. You don't have 60 girlfriends. Okay, Sonia? I do. And I want to have my own beautiful birthday. I'm going to have it at a beautiful place. And we're going to go and talk to a wedding, a uh, planner, a party planner. Okay? And then Dorinda goes, how about you have... A naked girl lay on a table with sushi on her body. I'm like, what is Dorinda talking about? First of all, that was popular in 2004, and it was really offensive back then. And you certainly wouldn't have it for a 64-year-old's birthday luncheon with 60 Upper West Side women. Okay, Dorinda? She is just, she's like, why are we here? Why do I have to drive an hour to celebrate Ramona once again? Because you're on a fucking TV show, Dorinda, okay? What else are you going to do with your time? Let me tell you something. I think I know why Dorinda was so awful and getting at Tinsley all the time and being like, just admit that you're dating Scott. Just admit it. Why are you trying to hide it? Just admit it. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because when I was at the Bravo Con, and maybe some of you guys were in the room with me, um, there was a Q&A. You could go to these little fun like Q&A things. And it was a bunch of producers of, like, Potomac, New York, and Atlanta. And one of the New York producers was this cute white guy. And he claims, he says, well, yeah, they're, sometimes you're closer. They all talked about these producers that sometimes they're closer or they, they talk on the phone more with um, – certain cast members and others, which I remember thinking, hmm, that doesn't really seem kosher. That doesn't seem like ethical, really. Like that doesn't, that seems, I don't know. So not ethical, but it just seems like somebody would have an unfair advantage. He said, every morning I talked to Dorinda for an hour. Now, BravoCon was like November 16th and 17th. So this was just a couple weeks after this day was shot. So someone brought it up to me. Do you think 
that Dorinda knew that maybe Tinsley had some kind of back deal. Maybe it was made after they started filming, but that, in fact, she knew she was going to be with Scott. And the only way to make this relationship work is she needs to leave, be off the show, be with him every day in Chicago. And that was something that she wanted to do. So she somehow was able to have an exit date to get out of her contract and go live her life as she should. Um, and just like I've been saying, these women that have been on the show long, whether they're in L.A. or New York or Beverly Hills or New York, they get bitter if they feel that they're working more hours and have that mic to the small of their back attached to their bra longer than other women. And Dorinda was just out to prove something and was just like obsessed with this. And I think somehow she was leaked that information and then was out to challenge Tinsley constantly. So um, they're going to take a two-week break, but it'll come back. looks real fun. And now with my hilarious guest, actor, comedian, podcaster, Stephen Glickman.